Hey guys, JT Shaver here with New Layer and today we're going to be taking a look at the Digital Photo Chameleon RGB Tube Lights. This review is going to be a little bit different than the ones I normally do where I go over all the details of a light and show you some fancy b-roll and some close-ups because it's easy enough to look up the technical specs online so today I'm going to go over a more real-world application and mention some of the good and bad things that will help you decide whether or not this light will fit into your workflow. I do camera gear and lighting reviews every week, so make sure you hit subscribe if you like drooling over gear that you may or may not ever buy. So first, I'll cover some of the basics of these lights really quickly. This is an RGBW tube light, and it comes with a pretty decent case. It's not super padded, but it's gonna do fine for you and it comes with everything you need to get started, including mounting hardware and a charger. You can control this light with the panel on the back or with an app or DMX board, and I've never used the app or DMX board, so I can't personally speak from experience, but I have heard that they work just fine. These do have built-in batteries that last anywhere from one and a half to about four hours, depending on how bright you're using the lights. Like a lot of other RGB tube lights, these do have built-in effects like cop car and lightning and things like that, but most of them I don't really find useful and I did note two things that are missing from this light. The first thing is a burning out light bulb and the second thing is a flickering TV set and out of all the effects I feel like these are two of the more used ones so just keep that in mind. So the biggest consideration with these lights is simply the price. These are budget lights and the two foot version is about $210 and the four foot version which I have is $295 each. Now I know that's still a lot of money but the next closest light is probably the Nanlite Pavo tubes and those are about $100 more expensive each. And then if you get into something like the Quasar Science tube lights, those are like 500 bucks so Especially if you're buying a set, it can add up really quick. I'm out in my warehouse so I can show you one of my favorite ways to use these tube lights, especially the four foot ones. I'll be using kind of a three point lighting setup to create a really contrasty and dramatic kind of sports type portrait. And I'm not gonna get shirtless for you, so you're gonna have to use your imagination. You dirty dog. The traditional setup for something like this would be to use 1x4 foot strip boxes for the back or side lights. In this case, we're just going to be using the chameleon tubes hanging vertically from a couple of light stands. This setup is so much faster and easier, you don't have to deal with a modifier, they run on batteries so there's no cords lying around, and they're just easier to transport overall. For this setup, I'm putting the chameleon lights to the side just out of the frame of the camera and slightly behind the subject, me. And then I'll set the color temperature to 5600 Kelvin because I'm using one other daylight balanced LED in this photo. The color range in white mode for the chameleon tube lights is 2800 Kelvin to 9990 Kelvin which is just a huge range and really useful. So if we take a photo with just the chameleon tube lights that I've set up, you can see we get a really nice full body length side light that defines the silhouette. Then all we have to do is bring in our key light and I want that to be a little darker than the side lights. So that's gonna give us a more dark or dramatic type portrait. For my key light, I'm using a Godox FV200 and a 48 inch collapsible softbox or beauty dish, and it has a grid on it to help control some of that light spill and focus it more on the subject, me. As a side note, I picked up a TacLife portable power station to see if it would be a good fit for powering a couple LED lights on the go, and this thing is badass. I'm still doing some testing on it, but I will be posting a full review on what type of lights it can handle and the maximum power output. So if you're interested in seeing that, make sure you subscribe. The key light setup for this is really simple. I'm just gonna point it down and raise it up above the camera and bring it almost in line with the camera just off to the side. So with this simple setup, you can get some really clean, dark, and dramatic portraits. And what's nice about this is that it takes no time to set up and if you're shooting something like a team, you can have individual people step in, take a few photos and be gone in no time. If you bump the key light up on this a little bit, it's also a really good setup for player promo videos that you can use on things like social media. Another thing we can do since these are RGB lights after all is add some color to increase the contrast in our picture. One idea is to use team colors or brand colors if you're working with a company on some marketing materials or something like that. Let's assume that our team colors are teal and orange. Convenient, right? So I'll set one light to orange and one light to teal and we'll take another picture and see how that looks. There's a lot of scenarios where tube lights like this make good replacements for strip boxes. I actually did a video on lighting some glass liquor bottles and I used a tube light to create a really sharp reflection on one side of the bottle so 
I'll leave a link to that if you want to check that out too. Now obviously a tube light is only a couple inches wide where a 1x4 strip box is an entire foot wide, so they do create slightly different type of light. The strip box is softer, but if you don't need that soft light, it's so much easier to set up a tube light because you don't need a modifier, you don't need power cords, and they're just easier to take with you wherever you go. There's a few things I want to mention because no light is perfect and hopefully this will help you decide if the chameleon lights are right for you. So when I first used the cables that came with these to hang the lights on the side that has the two knobs, the cable threads between the knobs and what happens is it wedges between those and kind of acts like a gear. So when I started turning one knob, it would make the other knob turn the opposite direction and this just made it impossible to get accurate settings dialed in. Now I did come up with a little trick that works. You have to thread it through there and then screw it together and instead of hanging it from that end, you reach between the two knobs and pull that end out and hang it from that. It's something really dumb to have to worry about but hopefully it'll save you some frustration and I actually like doing this better because it makes it a little more rigid so it doesn't swing around on a light stand so much. So that leads me to one other little minor annoyance about these. The ridges that stick out are kind of meant to hang the light and protect the knobs at the same time. The issue is that the knobs stick out farther than the ridges so if you're using the light and moving it around and you set it down on end for a second, it actually pushes the knobs in because they are buttons and can change your settings so that's annoying. If the knobs were a little shorter or the ridges were a little bigger it would completely eliminate that issue and it would also solve the issue of the hanging that I mentioned earlier. I also think that the mounting brackets could be a little bit better. The first thing about them is that they're super tight when the tube is inside and it's almost impossible to unclip them unless you squeeze with one hand and unclip with the other. The mounting brackets do work really well horizontally, but if you want to mount something at an angle, you have to use an adapter like a ball head, and those tend to slip, so they just don't work that great. Now vertically, obviously you can hang the lights using the cables that come with these, but like I mentioned, they swing around when you move the light stands. So it would have been nice to see the bracket designed differently with maybe threads on two sides. That way you can more rigidly hang the lights from a light stand if it's threaded at the top. The power adapter that comes with this is for 220 volts and it does come with an adapter to 110 volts, but the adapter just doesn't fit that great so it's not perfect solution. I wouldn't really trust the adapter if you're going on a long shoot and people are walking around because they could easily just bump it and it would pop right out. When you're just charging your light and know that nobody's going to be around, it's not an issue. The cable that goes from the wall to the power brick is a standard cable, so you could pick up a 110 volt one if you want to do that. Lastly, the menu system isn't great, it's not bad, but it's just not super intuitive. For example, it has something called Color Atla Mode, and that doesn't really mean anything to me. I'm assuming it stands for Color Atlas because it lists presets of colors. I just don't really know. You do get used to it quickly, but it just could be better. I have a few different other tube lights, and I really do enjoy using the Chameleon tubes. And if you can get over some of the minor quirks with these lights, I think they perform just as well as the more expensive units. And honestly, if you're using these, nobody's ever going to be able to tell that you didn't use a higher end brand in your work. Really, for the fact that these are a budget piece of equipment, I think they're really excellent. The uses for tube lights like this are really endless. Like I showed in this video, they're really good strip box replacements, but they also work really well to flood a background with color. You can take two of them and kind of aim them to the center of the backdrop to feather the light and just get really nice coverage, or they work really well to fill an entire room with light or color. Check the links in the description if you want to see all the technical specs on these lights, and they are affiliate links, but it doesn't cost you anything extra, and it really does help me create more videos like this. So what do you think? Do you think tube lights live up to all the hype that they've gotten lately? Leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. That's it for now guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.